Hi, this is Stella with today's Motivational Minute. You know, for the last several months, in fact, for the better part of 2016, one of the things God has allowed me to focus my spiritual energy on is understanding my identity in Christ. The Word of God says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, and old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Now, what I want to talk about briefly today is understanding what that new thing is. When we talk about identity, we are describing what it means to how, in terms of how I see myself, how I think about myself. And in order for me to see myself in a certain way and think about myself in a certain way, I have to have an identity that associates myself with the image I desire. Let me give you a for example. For example, I'm a mother. And so as a mother, you have certain identities. There are certain ways of seeing and perceiving yourself, which gives you permission to behave and think and, and do certain things. So as a mother, I have permission to protect, to guard, to watch over, to, to serve and to take care of my child. That is my identity as a mother. Another identity I have is my identity as a business owner. So as a business owner, I have an identity which allows me to think of myself in certain ways in terms of how I is set business, I, I set speaking engagements, I do conferences or whatever the things I do as a business owner, okay? I'm a property owner. So again, there are certain permissions that come with being a property owner that as it relates to my identity in that area. Now, every identity has character attached to it. In other words, how I do those things will manifest out of my character values. So if my character values are in excellent, if I value excellence, then I'm going to have, I'm going to manifest excellence as it relates to my identity as a mother. Okay. Now, all of us have varying degrees of identities and all of us have varying degrees of character that is associated with every identity. Here's another powerful thing about identity. It doesn't matter whether you are focusing in on a person's, an element of a person's identity or character from a negative point of view or a positive point of view. My energy and the ability of the enemy to attach permissions to that thing it will happen whether I do it, I'm doing it intentionally or not. Now, what do I mean? Every identity has a permission. In other words, if my identity as, as a business person and I'm a person of integrity and I want to I want to walk in honor and integrity, then in other words, when I do that, I am that it gives permission to the kingdom of God to draw all of those benefits that come with walking in honor. He gives them permission to be attracted to me. The same thing happens in a negative. If I see in, a, in another person a character that is vile, that's base, that's evil, and I begin to focus in on that thing, even though I am condemning it, even though I'm saying how much I dislike it, even though I'm saying that is not, I don't like that. The fact that I am focusing my energy on it and I'm giving my thought to it, I am granting permissions to the kingdom of darkness to introduce elements of that thing into my life. I am allowing it to attach to my identity. That is why the Word of God also says that whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Meditate on these things. Allow these things to come to the forefront of your imagination. Allow these things to come to the forefront of your thought systems. Let them be on the tip of your tongue. Let them be the core of your conversation. Why? Because what you think about, you speak about. What you speak and think about, you bring about. We create in our lives out of the pool of our identity. We attract to ourselves permissions out of what we focus on and talk about. Now, why am I bringing this to bear today? Because I've been listening to a lot of Christians, believers, say things about this election, describing themselves in ways that absolutely denounce the favor of God and grant the enemy permission to bring into your life base characters that the enemy wants to introduce like bigotry. I don't care who's a bigot. 
It is irrelevant and immaterial because the word of God has decreed according to scriptures for me that I have the favor of God attached to my life. And regardless of what happens in anybody else's world, I decree that favor is all the enemy has permission to bring into my life. Here's the other thing about understanding how identity works. When you identify with the negative elements of a thing, you grant that thing permission to attach and align with your life. You come into alignment, you come into agreement with it, whether it's positive or negative. Even if you are focusing in on it to condemn it, doesn't matter. Whether you're praising it, or whether you're condemning it, you are coming into alignment with it. So protect your identity. Decide, regardless of what happens in any election, regardless of what happens in any political situation, regardless of what happens. Isaac reaped, he sowed in a famine and reaped a hundredfold. It doesn't matter what's happening in the political atmosphere. You have permission based on the new things that come to your life because you are in Christ. You have permission for the favor of God to be attached to you at all times, regardless. So I have favor with everybody in Jesus name. And I have favor. Even my enemies have to be at peace with me. Why? Because of the permissions that come with my identity in Christ. And I grant those identities and those permissions, right and privilege to stay in my world and to stay in my life because of my decrees and what I say about myself and what I say about my life. I release, I grant, I give authority through my permissions. So whatever I say, what I decree, what I speak, I think on a thing and I grant it authority to manifest in my life. Well, that's what I wanted to share with you today about protecting your identity. How do you protect your identity in Christ? You be careful, choose carefully what you speak about. Guard your lips about what you say about another person because when you talk about it, even to condemn it, you are granting the enemy permission to introduce that thing into your life. So if you focus on the bigotry in an individual, you talk about it, you speak about it, you condemn it, you are granting it permission to enlarge itself in your life because what you think about, you speak about, and what you think and speak, you bring about. This is Stella with today's edition of Better Life. Thanks for listening. And until next time, you make it a terrific day.